Welcome to Powerboat Television. I'm Steve Bull, and this is my good buddy Chris. Say hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. Why don't you just get the wave oh. runners ready? <laughs> well, he's getting the Yamaha wave runners ready. I can tell you what we're going to be doing with them. We're going to be geocaching by water. If you've never heard of geocaching, it's basically a GPS scavenger hunt. The app is free for your phone. We're going to start right in our backyard here in Barrie for our first stop. And as you can see, hundreds of spots zooming in. There's a couple right along the water. So that's what we're going to do. Now, it's a great excuse to check out new waterways other than just launching and touring around. Gives you something to do. Perfect day for it. So we're going to spend a few days geocaching across the lakes of Ontario. Let's do this thing. Let's go. Launching at the Tiffin Ramp in Barrie was the perfect start for us, as it's just a few kilometers from the Powerboat TV office, so it wasn't a big risk to see if this would even work. The closest one was right across the bay, so we raced there first. But as quickly as things started off, they went pear-shaped. That first cache, though right along the water, was along a rocky shore. And not wanting to damage our rides, we scrubbed that and headed to the next one, down the shore a little ways. Part of the challenge, and in my eyes fun, of doing this by water is the additional step of having to find somewhere to beach or tie up for many spots. In this case, there was a trail up a steep hill, but climbable and flip-flops, so we've crossed that first obstacle. Now we're on to the hunt. The app told us we were close, and now the next obstacle is actually finding the cache which is usually hidden and can vary in size, shape, and style. Uh, the hint is tree. It's a black plastic box. The tree certainly narrows it down. <laughs> Are we right on top of it? Yeah. It only took a few minutes of wandering, but soon enough. Found it. Nice. Yeah, it's in there. Do you want to grab it? I think that's it. Yeah, that's totally it. Did you get a shot of it? What's in each cache is a little different, but the log book is the common theme. Sign your names and date your find before logging it on the app. What most people do is they'll leave, you know, a little trinket to, to take. Take one with you, put one back. We're going to one up the trinket idea and whoever finds this next not only gets this super cool boatbuys.com keychain they're gonna get this little note which gives them a free one-year digital subscription to our sister publication boats and places magazine with that, we'll seal the cache, put it back exactly where we found it, and back to the Wave Runners and on to the next stop. Follow me. This one near Innisfil Beach is right beside the dock, which hopefully means an easy find. Nope. 20 minutes of searching later, and we're calling it. One for two. <laughs> exactly. Logging this as a DNF. Did not find. But, nice day on the water. Can't complain. That's enough for us on Lake Simcoe, so we're going to haul out and head east for more geocaching by Wave Runner later in the show. Welcome back to our geocaching adventure. We've left Barrie and had a pleasant few hours on the back roads of eastern Ontario. A quick and easy launch, and we're once again underway. Now that we've launched here in Kingston, I can tell you why I'm really enjoying geocaching by boat. Yes, I get to drive a lot of PWCs and boats for this job in different waterways, rivers, and lakes across North America. I'm very lucky in that regard, but on my personal time, I fall into the same rut and routine that most of us do. Same boat, same lake, same route most of the time. Geocaching really does force you to explore new waterways, and it's actually quite addictive in a good way. And, ooh, actually behind us. So it looks like there's one 1.3 kilometers away. That way.
As we zipped up the Cataraqui River, we quickly discovered another dead end. The cache was along a path, but no safe place to beach yet again. No matter, there are two more a few clicks south, so we'll head back down towards Lake Ontario and cut into Confederation Basin. The good sized break walls are earning their keep on this windy day. The lake is rough, but in here is calm and smooth. Adding to the luxury, we don't have to beach here. Instead, there are city docks that have a pay and display machine, just like street parking, and our wave runners can fit into a single spot. So, we're legit and can explore without worry. We're going to find you. <laughs> so, it says it's like right at that point there, mm -hmm. where those rocks are. Let's do it, let's go check it out. 103 meters. Right along the shore, the hunt begins. After 20 minutes, even following the clue about the compass in the park, nothing. Clearly, we're missing something. I say we call it a did not find. Yeah. But there's one like 150 meters this way, so hang on. I logged this one, did not find. Okay. Sounds good. Still down the water's edge though. This one was a little different and had a riddle. The clue was an anagram of the name. It says we're like right on top of it. Um, okay, the clue, this, this one's called Thin Witches. And it says, it's an anagram. Turn on brain. Thin witches. They're gonna be white. There's white stuff. Turn on brain, turn on light bulb. Like a thin switch, switch? No. E <laughs> oh cool. Yeah. Very cool. Ooh. As we log this, I will apologize for ruining the surprise of a couple of these caches. But the only way to get more people interested is to show them how cool these are and how much fun it can be. And this one, we just couldn't pass up. It will likely move after this airs, but whoever placed this is clearly clever enough to come up with another great spot. And with that, we'll call it a day in Kingston, having found one of the two caches we were able to reach and head back. Still later in the show, we'll continue the geocaching adventure further north to see if it can take me places I've never been on a lake I know extremely well. Onwards and upwards. Up the map, that is. One of the joys of using Yamaha Wave Runners to geocache by water is that they're so easy to trailer. Sure, we have a big truck, but you don't need one to comfortably haul these around and PWCs have super shallow drafts, so you can go places that would be unreachable in bigger boats. All of that will hopefully add up to an experience I've never had. For our final stop, we're on the lake of my family cottage where I discovered boating as a kid. Okay, so it says we are three and a half kilometers away, so we're gonna go around that point and kind of do south, but just follow me. Okay. This one's called Portage Flyer. Let's see if geocaching can teach me something new about a lake I feel I know every inch of. Whether you're doing it by land or water, respect is key. The GPS coordinates were close to this dock, but it's private, so we kept looking. Never trespass, even if you think you'll be quick. Lucky for us, there was an open and sandy bit of beach by the road that we, or a canoe, could get to. A bit sad to say, but we've already achieved the goal. I've only ever ripped past this bay. That's all changed now, of course. 56 meters. So we're going the right way. Thanks. Maybe Miata knows. Okay, so it's up here. The name is Portage Flyer, and the hint says in the name. Well, like an actual flyer about portaging? You got Portage Flyer Lane over here. Yeah, it says we're getting further away, so it's gotta be, what do these plaques say? 
sentiment of North Portage. Uh, yeah, the Portage Flyer. Careful. Train. Watch for bees. Ooh. Careful. Nada. Oh, I think I found it. Booyah. Look at that. That's a cool one. We won't entirely ruin the surprise of this one, but we found it, logged it, and on to the next. On the one hand, you don't need an excuse to have a good time on the water, but if it's a lake you're always on, or you don't want to just aimlessly putz around a random waterway, geocaching is a great excuse to explore and is surprisingly addictive. Okay, so you can start, you can see it now, like there's a bridge right yeah. here. Oh, yeah. So this one is like just, it says it's just past it, it might be under it. Beaching here is a little bit trickier, but we found a spot wide enough for one of us, so Chris idled beside while I gave it a shot solo. But after about 10 minutes, I gave up. I don't know, man. No luck. I need oh, really? your eagle eye. You're the one that spotted all of them so far. Yeah. I don't really wanna, yeah. All right, well, let's keep going. DNF. I don't know if in the purest sense of the term, I would call that a water-based boat-friendly cache, but made it happen with the Wave Runners. So I gotta say, geocaching worked out perfectly. Whether it was in Lake Simcoe and Barrie in the backyard of our Parbo TV offices, or new waterways in Kingston, or even here in the lakes and rivers that I grew up boating on and have spent a lot of time. It forced us into new bays, new areas, and new adventures, and wave runners were perfect, eh? You could get somewhere where you'd otherwise need a canoe or kayak. So we may be out of time for the show, but we still got a couple hours. You wanna do some more? Let's go check some out. All right, on this next lake, there's uh, even more. There's one in four kilometers, so I'll start tracking. All right. Let's do it.